Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson two of the TMS 9900 assembly programming tutorials. Now, we looked last time at the basics of the processor. We did a few simple mathematical commands and discussed the registers. We're going to carry on today with the addressing modes. In this lesson, we're going to look at each of the possible sources and destinations of our parameters for our commands. So this will really discuss all of the possible addressing modes and give us some idea of the flexibility of the processor when it comes to the other commands we'll be looking at later on in the series. All of these examples, as you can see, are on my website. So if you want to read about them, please go to my website. You can also get the source code for today's example and the um, build scripts and the pre-configured Notepad++ that I use. So hopefully you can get started nice and easily. But we're also, of course, going to see source code examples and see the examples running and learn how each of these addressing modes works in today's video. So let's go over to the source code and see things in action. OK. So here's today's example. We need to just unrem one of these sections here for the various tests we're going to do. And we're going to go over each of the addressing modes with a separate example, and we'll see them on screen. And we'll just sort of discuss what happened. Off we go. OK, so here's my emulator here, classic 99. And I just need to press a key and then press number two here to load the ROM cartridge. And here it is. Let's have a look at our first example. So the first one is immediate addressing. Now this uh, we've seen before, we didn't really discuss what it was, but immediate addressing is just basically where we have a parameter specified in line with the actual command itself. So we've got our load immediate command here, our destination register, and our source here is the immediate value 0FFEEH in, in this case. So we're loading 0FFEEH into R1, and you can see here FFEE in hexadecimal has been loaded into R1. Now, as well as a numeric value, we can also use a symbol. In this case, we've used the symbol user RAM. Now, this is actually being defined in our header. It's being defined as a symbol user RAM equals 8300 here in hexadecimal. And so we've used that symbol definition here and loaded into R0. And you can see R0 has become 8300. So that's all immediate addressing is. Um, it's just a value specified in line with the command itself. Now, the more common one we'll see is workspace register addressing, and this is where we're using the 16 16 bit workspace registers, which are actually um, an area of memory that are being used a bit like a zero page on the 6502, but we just specify them as a numeric value here, like R0, R2, R1, R3. And I believe, actually, just as a, a point of note, this assembler will actually continue to work the same if we actually remove the Rs here. And you can see here we've copied R0 to R2 here. So R0 was 8300, and now R2 has gone from 0 to 8300. And we've also copied R1 to R3 here, and R1 was FFEE, and so now R3 is FFEE as well. So that's what workspace register addressing is. It's just these R registers here. Now, if I actually take out the Rs from here, and this is just a bit of a quirk of this assembler, and I run again, you'll see it's actually worked just fine. And the result is exactly the same. Now, the R's are, are basically being overlooked by the code here. And the reason I'm telling you this is I'm always going to use the R's because I think it's important to make things clear. But you might find in some cases um, you've made a mistake, like um, if you accidentally sort of did, um, instead of load immediate, R0, 2 here. If, if you wanted to do that, and now we've got a value 2 in R0 here, if you, for, if you mistakenly used the wrong command and used a move, well, the assembler is going to assemble that. Well, now you're copying from the value in register 0 to register 2, so it won't have the same effect. And as I say, it's, it's just the way this assembler works. I thought it was worth mentioning at this point because it did catch me out of suit only a few points when I was programming and making a little bit of mistakes, which we all do, of course. Now, that's the, um, the most basic ones, immediate and um, register to register transfers. Now, like most processes, the TMS9900 has the potential to use the value in a register as an address for the next command. And that's what we're doing here. And we do that in this case by specifying a star at the start of the register. So when we say star R0 here, we're specifying that the address in R0 is the source of the parameter that we're moving into R3 here. So we're going to load R3 with the value at address in R0. Let's fire that up and let's see what happens. OK, so here we've got our, this is our last test. So this is our next test. So what we've done here is we've loaded R3 from the address in R0. So R0 contained 8300 and we've dumped that memory just here. So we've loaded in 
R3-1122 from the address in R0 and that's loaded in from just here. Now we actually did the same with R2 here, loading from one R1, but R1 just contains some weird value and um, I guess there's zeros at that address, so that's why we've got that value there. Now um, and another thing to point out at this point is um, if I just copy my memory dump routine here, if I just copy this and put this down here, now in these cases we're using these as the source and that's just as a test really but um, but there's actually no reason why we can't use them as a destination as well. It's I'm just doing them as a source just for simplicity just you're doing one example of each addressing mode they can be used as a destination as well so you can see here that we've actually loaded R0 into the address in R0 remember the address in is being specified by that star there and so we've taken R0 and we've stored it to memory address 8300 and you can see that has actually been stored just there. So the, the point I'm trying to make is even if we're only showing them in one context like the source here, they can also be used as the destination. So there we go, that's the first set of simple tests. Let's move on to the second set with this jump here. Okay. So now we're going to be using auto increment addressing. Now you'll be familiar with this if you're familiar with the processor like the 68000. Um, what we're doing is the same as before. We're using an indirect address, an address in a register. But this time we're going to read consecutive memory addresses because of this plus at the end here. So the star specifies um, indirect, the address in the register. So the address in R0 is the source. And the plus at the end says increment the register after each read. And we can see that just here. So we started at 8300 and then we did our first read. So the address register was auto incremented by the time we showed the monitor. This is the monitor command just here. And so 8300 became 8302. The first value, this one here, was read into R1. We did the same again. The second value was loaded into R2. We did the same again. And the third value was loaded into R3 just here. Now, it's important to point out that we were going up by two each time because we were loading in a word. If we were using byte reading instead by just putting a B in here, well, you can see now that we're going up by just one byte each time. And of course, we're loading one byte into each of the registers just here. So we're still reading from consecutive addresses, but now we're going up by one byte each time rather than two. Of course, these commands are exactly the same as doing an inc t of r0 here, we could do um, inc t r0 and that would have the same effect. But of course, this is now two commands which is going to take more memory and more processing power. So um, we want to, you know, merge things together. So by using that plus, we're auto incrementing. And of course, that's great for if we're reading data from a bitmap to show to the screen or something like that. It's unfortunate to notice that uh, it seems that the um, TMS 9900 doesn't have an auto decrement command. On some processes, you would be able to do this. Um, it, it does compile, but it doesn't work. <laughs> you can see here that it, it hasn't actually gone down. So the, um, I, I don't know what the um, assembler is actually doing when it sees that command. But uh, as I say, um, it, it's not working as a, a valid command. I think, again, I think it's just ignoring it because it's still treating it as register zero. But um, yeah, we've got auto increment, but we don't have auto decrement. Now, if we just temporarily run these out, we're going to try out symbolic direct addressing next. This is where we specify an actual address to directly read from. Now, we specify an at symbol, and this is basically saying the source parameter in this case is at memory address 8300 in hexadecimal. The H is hexadecimal, of course. So we're loading from 8300 in R0, 8302 into R1, 8304 into R2, so on and so forth. Let's fire this up and let's have a look at what happens. Well, I don't think it's going to be too surprising to us if we just lock this to the top of the screen. Right, so what we're doing here is we are loading in from memory address 8300 into our zero. You can see 1122 here. And then we're loading in 3344 because we've specified 8302, so two bytes along. And that's loading into our one. And 5566 into our two. And 7788 into our three here. Now, of course, again, we can do this with bytes if we preferred. You know, all these commands will work, all these parameters will work in all these cases. And you can see now we've just loaded in a single byte here. And of course, they would also work just fine as a destination if we wish to do that.
you can see we've loaded R0, R83 here into the byte address at 8300 and so the top byte has changed to just an 83 here. So yeah, we can use these as a source or a destination. And so this at symbol here is telling the assembler to use the parameter at the address specified here. And that's what we're doing. Now, as well as of course using a numeric address, we can use a symbol. So again, we can use our user RAM symbol, which has actually got a value of 8300 because the assembler is converting the user RAM label here to a number when it actually compiles and that will work just fine as well. Now, one important thing to notice is like a lot of 16-bit processors, if we're loading in words, we have to do it from even addresses here. So um, if you look here, we're loading in from user RAM 2, 4, and 6 here, and we've loaded in 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8 here. And that's worked just fine. However, when we try and load in words from addresses with one byte differences, you can see we've loaded in the same value twice here because it's actually reading from the even boundary if we try and read in from an odd boundary. So that hasn't worked. It will, of course, work if we load in bytes. It's only 16-bit values that this problem occurs with. So if we load in bytes here, well, you can see now, if you look at the top byte, we've loaded in 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Now, the bottom bytes contain the previous values because they weren't changed by those commands. But as I say, it's just to make the point that this limit of odd addresses not working is only applicable to 16-bit values, not 8-bit values. So that's our second set of tests there. Let's move on to the third and final set. Okay, so indexed addressing. Again, this is another one you might be familiar with, with on the 68000, if that's a processor you're familiar with. So this is where we specify a, an address in a register, a, an indirect address here, and also an offset to that address. So in this case, R3 is pointing to our user RAM, and we're gonna use some offsets, an offset of zero, an offset of two, and an offset of four. Again, we're working in 16-bit jumps, so over, always on the even boundaries here. Now, unlike before, where we were specifying a star for an index direct address, in this case, we're specifying brackets. So you can see here that we're loading in from the address at R3 plus zero here, and that's, that's the calculation that's actually occurring. And then in the next case, we're loading from R3 plus two, and then the case after we're loading from R3 plus four here. And you can see here that, um, well, R3 is pointed to 8300 here. And that's of course is the start of this RAM area just here with these values. And then the offset zero is of course 1122. You can see that's been loaded in. R3 plus two is 3344. So we've loaded that in just here. And then 5566 has been loaded in just here. So we're specifying our offset here and we're specifying the address just here. Now, as well as positive offsets, we could use a negative offset. And in, so in the second case, we've set user RAM to point to the address area just here, four bytes in. And then we've read in the first value, 5566. Then we've offset by minus two. So now we're gonna be pointing to here. So 3344 four, and then minus four. So 1122 two has been loaded in just here. So, so yes, you can see the offsets can be positive or they can be negative. Now, as well as being a number here, we can again use the symbol here. So in this case, we've defined off two, off O and off four here, and we can use those just here to make things a little bit clearer. Now, um, if you're familiar with other processes, you'll probably know why you might want to use these. But if you're thinking, well, what use is this? Well, the, the way I tend to think of this is um, like if, if you're writing a game and your game has um, a, a player and the player can shoot up to eight bullets on the screen, you're gonna want the same piece of code to handle the movement and animation of each of those eight bullets. So each of those bullets will probably have a bank of memory with things like the XY position of the bullet, the acceleration speed, and maybe the sprite of the bullet, something like that. And you'll pass the pointer to the start of that block of data to your drawing routine to handle the update of that bullet. And so you would be using R3 to point, in this case, to your point, to your bullet's definition data. And then you would define offsets to the X position, the Y position, and the sprite number or something like that. And then you would be able to read them in here and work with them. And you've got a very clear um, purpose for each of the offsets because you can define a symbol for them. And just depending on what which bullet R3 is pointing to, the code will work exactly the same each iteration of the loop for each of the bullets. So as I say, this is something that's really you know very handy for you. And um, on other systems as well, sometimes you'll have a pointer to a um, a block of data that you pass to a system function call and sometimes even the system will turn a pointer to a data definition which will contain things like the um, size of the screen or the keys that have been pressed down. It's really quite common to see this used and for 
a fixed definition of the layout of the data following the address that's been passed from a system firmware function. So this is something that's going to be definitely very um, interesting and worth knowing about. And you know, it's, a, it's an impressive feature to see on such an early processor. So there we go. So that's all of the addressing modes we're covering here. We've um, got over those pretty quickly because to be honest, the TMS 9900 doesn't have as many as some of the other processors we've gone over. Some of them have ended up very, very long these lessons. So um, quite relieved by that. But um, the TMS has a, a good range, you know, far better than any of the 8-bit processors. And as I say, it really was an early system. So I think it's totally forgivable that it is relatively limited compared to some of the other systems we've looked at in the past. Anyway, we've really just started on the TMS 9900. So, you know, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, you know, I hope you have. Um, as I say, go to my website, download the source code, download the dev tools. If you're interested, I've got a forum you can discuss assembly programming on. I've got a Discord. I've also got a live streaming channel. So if you want to, um, you know, sort of hang out and watch me play games or occasionally I do a um, morning um, 5 a.m. assembly programming stream where I write um, little programs that later become tutorials and things. So, you know, if that's your kind of thing, please check out that. Anyway, whatever you do, I hope you'll enjoy programming in the TMS 9900 and I hope you'll enjoy assembly in general. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.